Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Decorum by Floodgate Games. This game plays how many players? Two to four. Yes, and it is for ages 13 and up, and it usually takes around, what would you say? 45 minutes? Yeah, 30 to 45 minutes per play. Uh, and when you play the two player variant, it's just gonna be a kind of uh, campaign mode where you go from one to the next to the next, utilizing these guys here. And then if you play the three or four player mode, they're kind of like one shot sessions where you can play the more difficult ones with the higher stars or the easier ones. In the game decorum, you're basically going to be trying to, what would you say? Organize a house? Yeah, you're trying to work together to make the house follow certain conditions. Yeah, and we each have our own certain guidelines. If you're playing as the blue player, you're gonna have certain rules and requirements with the yellow or the green player. And of course, if you're playing with four players, you play as the red player. And uh, you're going to have your own unique little house here, which is gonna have a front and back for a different number of players and certain requirements and placements for each of the different decor um, styles. There's three different types with three different types of colors or four different types of colors. And then of course, there's the paint as well. And with the more advanced version, you start adding in roommates. And you're just trying to organize the house exactly as you are required to. And every player needs to organize that house uh, based on their requirements in order for you to successfully complete the house. Uh, now you can't actually say what you want and where you want it. Uh, we have to do, you have to talk basically between rounds. Do you remember how that works? Yeah, you can't be like, my bathroom has to be blue. You just have to like, say whether you like the change or not if somebody changes. Yeah, so if I move, for instance, if she wants the bathroom to be uh, all yellow and I move this yellow piece out and change it for a red one, she would say something like, I hate it. Yes, exactly. And that, that is how we kind of communicate with each other. We go through rounds in a four, three, uh, three or four player game, we'll be doing uh, five rounds, we'll lose a life and we'll keep doing this back and forth, giving each other information until hopefully we either are able to solve the problems and communicate correctly with each other or if all the lives run out, we lose. And that's basically the idea of the game, basically trying to coordinate with each other without ex exactly expressly stating what we want to make the house into the type of house we all want to live in. For the game, Decorum by, blood, by, by, by Floodgate Games. Bloodgate Games. <laughs> Family-friendly uh, game for sure. Let's talk about how the setup works and basically how to play, and then we'll go into our review. So the setup of the game is pretty simple. You're gonna take the house board and you're gonna take the roof and then you're gonna organize it based on what you're playing. If you're playing a two player game mode or the three slash four player game mode. You're also going to take the token board and uh, associate all the tokens. Where are they all gonna go? Yeah, so all the tokens have their correct space that they go in and then there's the paints that go at the top. Yeah, and they each have four different tokens and you also have a unique uh, bonus tokens that you can use. You know what those guys are called over there? The people? Yeah, they're like roommates, basically. And you're going to use those when the game gets more complex. And then, depending on the game mode, we'll just talk about the three or four player game modes. That's when we like to play. Uh, you're going to choose one of these guys here. And there's a little stars at the top that indicate difficulty. You should start with the level one stars and go to two and go to three. Pull those out. In each of them is going to have a little setup thing here. And this explains what? What does it talk about? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, it does. Look, there's the four different rooms and exactly what goes in them. So, Callie did this for the most part. You'll yeah, take, I never looked at that. You'll take the rooms out, uh, you take the board out, and you'll put all the different tokens on the room. So if it says a, a blue um, one of these guys here, and a yellow one of these guys here, and maybe it says a paint at the top, you're just going to place them down to kind of uh, make the house, like, set up. <laughs> basically. And uh, once you have it all set up, it has like kind of a little story that goes with it, tells you the number of players to play the game, uh, then you're basically going to get one of those cards there. It's kind of like a setup card for you specifically. It shows all of your objectives, and then you're gonna get the little cards. And the reason why you get those little cards is why. For multiple players? Yes, for multiple players, because if you're playing with three players, you're gonna, everybody's gonna get one of the fourth player cards. And also, whenever this token hits those little, those little heart markers, one of these heart markers is gonna go down, and you are going to have to give one of those cards to another player, and they're gonna look at your objective. So you're gonna give out enough information. After you've gotten one of those cards and all your little cards, Everything else is gonna be set aside. All you'll need is these two boards and this marker right off the one space and uh, five different hearts set aside that you're gonna be utilizing and hopefully not losing. <laughs> and after that, you're gonna to try to complete the game. It's a pretty straightforward setup and it works the same for any of these four player variants. And the two players is pretty much the same thing, but you're gonna be switching these boards up a little bit. 
So when playing Decorum, it's pretty simple. After the board's been set up and you have your handy dandy little card here that gives you the conditions that you need to fulfill in order to complete the specific scenario that you're doing, one player is going to start. When that player starts, they'll take an action. After their action is done, it'll move on to the next player and they'll take an action. And once everybody has taken an action, then you're gonna take this little heart symbol and move it on the track here. If you're playing a three or four player game, it'll go to the five spot and then it'll go back to the one spot. And it'll keep doing that over and over again until all these hearts are removed, in which case the game will be over if you're not able to complete all your conditions. In a two player game, it'll go through. You'll go from 15, uh, then to 20, 25, and 30, and that's how you're gonna lose your hearts in that way. Um, and it's very, very similar. But your objective is pretty simple. You need to get the board to match your conditions and everybody else's, but you don't know what theirs is and they can't exactly tell you. So you're gonna look at your little card here and you're going to define the conditions. My upstairs must contain only antique objects. So everywhere up here has to only be antiques. The downstairs or the upstairs must contain two rooms painted of the same color. And then finally, the house must contain exactly seven objects, no less or more. And it's possible, no matter what, for each of all the conditions to be fulfilled, but it's gonna be tricky. And so Alicia has her own conditions as well. Mine are, the kitchen must be painted red. The house must contain at least one room that contains three blue objects. Yep. And the house must contain more wall hangings than each other single type of object. So we have to match those. We don't know each other's, right? And so what we're going to do is take an action and our actions are as follows. Can you tell me an action? Yeah, so you can remove an object. Yep. You can place one in an empty space. Yep. You can swap an object with the same type. So red, color. yeah, so a blue will switch with a red one and a yellow will switch with a blue one. Mm -hmm. You can paint a wall or you can pass. Yeah, and if you pass, that indicates that you're happy with all your conditions. You can even like specify that your conditions have been met. You're like, oh, I'm good with what I have. Or maybe you don't know exactly what you should be doing and you don't wanna mess anything up. So there's reasons to pass. And basically what's gonna happen is uh, we're going to, as people choose actions, we'll say, I love it, I hate it. Uh, it's okay, eh, it doesn't matter to me. And that's basically how you can speak in this game. You can't specifically say, oh, I don't like the blue one, but you can say, ooh, I hate that move, and so on and so forth. Until basically what's gonna happen every round, we move this marker up and we'll go until we get to that fifth round. And when that happens, we lose a heart, but we get to have what they have, what they say is a house meeting. House meeting's pretty simple. We have our little cards. I can give her a little card and she can give anybody else a little card, including me, which will indicate one of our conditions. So maybe I'm missing one of her conditions and I just can't figure it out. She can kind of pass that along to me so I understand what she's trying to do. And we'll go back and forth until we're able to solve the house's problems. And if we can, we succeed, we can move on to the next scenario. And if not, we're going to fail. There's also, of course, the roommates, these guys here, which can be added in the game as you progress. And these guys are going to go into certain areas in the house, basically in bedrooms. And it'll have requirements on your cards as well in the different scenarios. Like maybe you need your roommate to be in a room with all blue things, but your roommate starts in a space with all red things. And you can move your roommate, uh, but only yours. And if you move into a room that's full, you have to move one of those roommates out into the room you were previously at. But you can't move anybody else's roommate unless you're moving yours into a space that's already full. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. This two player variant has a kind of campaign that starts with these little guys here. It goes from welcome home and then it continues all along. They have the different numbers, rock and roll, et cetera, et cetera. And this game is always replayable. You can always go ahead and put these back. And as long as you forget them, <laughs> you can play them again. Uh, but if you can't, you're, you're probably gonna wanna pass the game on to somebody else. But we'll get into that with the review of the game Decorum. I don't think we're forgetting anything specifically other than there's like some special campaign things that say don't open until the end. But otherwise, that's how you play, yeah? Yeah. All right. So Decorum is kind of a cooperative game uh, with a bit of tension and a bit of aggravation. <laughs> In this game, we're trying to work together. We have our conditions, no one else knows what our conditions are, and so because of that, we're gonna be fighting with each other or amongst each other to make sure that we can get these things done. I might know everybody's conditions, including my own, based on process of elimination, based on what they're trying to do, but that doesn't matter because I still need Callie, I still need Max, and I still need Alicia to understand all the conditions as well. And how you do that is you communicate in the worst way possible by just saying I love it or I hate it or I you know, kind of like it, <laughs> and trying to manipulate people to understand what it is that you want them to understand based on the different conditions that you have. The three player variant's also pretty cool too because you're gonna play like a four player game. Everybody's just gonna get an extra condition, making it, I guess, a little more challenging than a four player game would be because each player would have uh, technically one more condition as opposed to everyone just having three. 
And this game here is very, very simple and very, very straightforward. Uh, let's start with the artwork. Uh, this artwork is very kind of postmodern, or I guess maybe even modern, in how it's laid out. Everything has got a space for itself. All the stylization is pretty straightforward. Color variation is pretty straightforward. You know where everything goes at the end of the game, and you know how to set this up, even if you haven't played in a month or two. It's, it's that easy. Five hearts, place it out based on the scenario, everything else goes over there on that board, and then there's just four actions, and you take one action a turn. Yeah, I like how it's really obvious um, where things are supposed to go. It makes it easy. And I like how it's really colorful and clean. It mm. looks really nice. Yeah, it works really, really well. Uh, quality for components. Quality is excellent. Everything here has got a space for it. All the different packaging is really easy to put in and take out and slide back in. Probably didn't even notice. It kind of looks like we haven't played this game at all, but we've popped out over half of these specific three and four player games and a couple of the two player games as well. Really, really easy to play and understand how this game works based on how everything's put together. It gives you extra little things to add to the game. And then there's some other variant things I didn't open just yet because we haven't gotten through the full two player scenario. But uh, for the most part, all the quality is nice thick boards everything feels good to touch and put down the board i don't feel like i'm going to break anything i, I like the quality quite a bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um, the gameplay gameplay is easy choose a piece move it move it back put it on take it off pass i mean you're just trying to complete conditions uh, gameplay is actually very challenging and one mode that might be uh, ranked easy might actually be more challenging than, than the mode that's ranked hard well i think the first time we played we just didn't know how to Communicate. Do, yeah, so that's why we struggled the first time. But after that, we improved a lot. So that's true. There is a, a there is a like kind of a ball rolling down a hill effect as you play it. You'll start to understand it more. But I still think the first one was more challenging based on maybe how we started placement or how we moved things around. It kind of messed things up. When the game kind of asks you to do a certain thing in each of the different modes, maybe one mode we have our characters in one area and in the other area. I'm always like, oh, how do I make this room fit for my character? When the actual answer is, how do I, where do I move my character to a room that's going to work with it? And you can find out those answers based on the requirements. And so if, for instance, I place a room uh, that's green to blue, and she instantly places that room from blue back to green, I know for a fact I cannot meet a specific condition, in which case I need to think of something else. Because whenever somebody replaces it back with the exact same thing, it means that's kind of like a thing that yeah has to happen or another thing that we kind of figured out is if you say i hate it then that that really means you cannot change that yeah. like if my condition said the the kitchen has to be red walls and you change it back to whatever color and i say i hate it and i change it back then yeah, you know. it's a way to, to kind of like let people know that there's certain things that have to be done in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I don't like it or I'm whatever with it, you know, okay, if I, you don't like it, it's a thing that can be, but she's going to need to make, make, make changes. If it's a thing that she doesn't care about, it doesn't matter to her, it's not affecting her objectives. And if she likes it, it kind of changes or helps. And then if I, she loves it, in our opinion, it's that's a specific thing that you did that made it so that she uh, gets exactly what she wants for her objectives. Uh, I like the playthroughs of the game. We played multiple times. We actually, I was like thinking about playing one or two times, but we kept playing it because we really, really enjoyed it. This has got kind of a weird puzzly nature to it where I don't feel like I'm necessarily playing a puzzle game. I'm more playing a cooperative game, but in essence, it is a puzzle game. <laughs> and uh, normally I don't like puzzle games, but this one really, really worked for me. Uh, yeah. I really, really enjoyed this one. I like the communication. I like moving the pieces around. I like kind of setting the house up to the way it makes it, it makes everything works. I guess it messes with, like helps my o is it OCD. It's the one where you have to have everything like kind yeah. of put together, you know, like it has to be perfect. And whenever something's not correct, it like drives me nuts. So it made me want to do it and then go to the next one and do it again. And I, I got like really, really tingly throughout the second and third games because I'm like, that's not how it needs to be done and i'm like oh it feels so good when it's all everything a place for everything and everything in its place uh, i i love the gameplay of this game this game is uh, gonna do really well i think if it's not already done uh very very well but it's gonna be kind of probably challenging for some people uh, yeah i mean puzzle games are usually pretty hard for me but this one i liked because of the um cooperative aspect of it like that was my favorite part like trying to communicate with each other and like finding your own way to communicate so that the other people will know like how 
you need to have your conditions met. And, and the game gets easier as it goes along too, because you can share your objectives with each other um, yeah. as things progress before it's too late, which does help tremendously. And if you make the game more, more challenging, you can reduce the amount of times you can do that and how many times you can share with who. Um, but I don't think you really need to. There's gonna be more difficulty as you progress throughout the game and things get more challenging. Now, one negative thing I have about the game is once you play through all the scenarios for the four player missions, might as well go to the two player missions and play with just two players because you're gonna know most of these guys. Um, not, not necessarily, uh, maybe if you switch colors it might be more challenging. And people tend to forget, there's probably like three, six, nine, 12 different things for all the people, so you might forget. But realistically, it loses some replay value. I still remember the first the full first scenario from this game because of how traumatizing it was. <laughs> uh, but that being said, that's probably the only real thing I have as a negative for the game is the, the replayability is gonna be limited as far as four, three and four players go. Yeah, especially since we spent a lot of time on that first one, you could easily accidentally memorize all of it. <laughs> But otherwise, the Quorum is a great game. This is a game that's going to see a lot of play. Floodgate made an excellent choice to have this guy made. And um, I'm looking forward to playing the full two-player missions. I think we've got through most of these guys here. We'll probably play a couple of these uh, as well. When, whenever we have people show up, we'll do more challenging ones. But it'd be interesting. I want to see what's actually in these unique little boards. It looks like player boards or something. Something unique is going to happen in the scenario. So I'd like to try that one out as well. But yes, this is a game if you love puzzles and communication and cooperation. A definite pick up, in my opinion. Solid game. What do you think? Yeah, I like being able to cooperate with other players, so that was really fun. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button. You can also go ahead and check out our website. Unfilteredgamer.com. <laughs> this blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more there. And if you'd like, you can join us on our live stream. Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. Thanks, Alicia, for joining me. And as always, we look forward to... Decorating with you next time. Next time. Chair. You look so short when you're sitting. I'm bending over. That way it's a sit we're on the same level. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Did you change your shirt? Yes, this is a new one. Yesterday, okay. yesterday was the other one.